Hi guys, Long here, back with another math video. Today we're going to be uh, finding the volume of a torus. And a torus is sort of like this donut like shape. And um, sorry for the birds in the background, I have, I, we just caught some pets. Um, but uh, yeah, so finding the volume of a torus. So in this diagram, we have a torus uh, with uh, the radius of the overall shape of the torus being capital R and the radius of the inner smaller uh, circle part of the torus being lowercase r and uh, we have to find the volume of this torus uh, or finding a equation for the volume of the torus in uh, ter terms of uh, capital R and little r and see if you can do it on your own uh, try to derive it using calculus um, or something like that this is a calculus video by the way um, pause if you need to and without further ado um, I will go on to the solution so the first thing we want to do is actually figure out a method for solving for the volume of this torus. And initially, what you might want to do is you might want to ro find the uh, find the equation for the circle and rotate rotate it around the uh, the the y axes uh, to do some like you know rotational calculus something like that. Um, that actually. Uh, uh, might work, but it's a little it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, the easier solution is actually to um, uh, uh, move um, in uh, small uh, small uh, increments from uh, negative r to positive r, um, and f each time finding the area of the cross section of this donut. If you it's like if you're cutting a bagel in half and you want to put cream cheese in the center, this cross section right here. Um, while incrementing from negative r to positive r. That's the method we're going to use. And to do that, uh, I'm going to put this diagram here, which should help a lot, um, which will help a lot. So what is this diagram saying? So um, the diagram is basically um, showing you uh, how to calculate what we're going to call the inner radius of um, the cross-sectional area and the outer radius, uh, given a value of y. Uh, from here because we want to move uh, we want to have a definite integral from negative r to positive r um, and uh, so we need to um, put this cross-sectional area in terms of y so given a uh, shoot well given a value of y what is the cross-sectional area um, and to find this cross-sectional area we know the the uh, this cross-sectional area is uh, the area of this large circle subtracted from the areas of the small circle. So it's going to be uh, pi outer radius squared uh, minus pi inner radius squared. Now the question is, what are these outer and inner radiuses in terms of um, y? Um, well, we know that the this is uh, we know that the circ the circumference I mean the the radius of this little circle is lowercase r, um, so we can actually figure out the the this this small um, length right here, which is going to be uh, r squared minus y squared, um, and we know uh, based on this diagram right here that this is going to be capital R. So um, the the inner radius right here is going to be capital R minus R squared, uh, square root of R squared minus Y squared. And the outer radius right here is going to be capital R plus R squared minus Y squared. So we actually have our equation. Um, the outer radius is going to be capital R um, plus square root uh, R squared minus Y squared. Um, and the inner radius is going to be capital R minus lowercase r minus y squared and we have our equation right here if you simplify this equation using various algebra um, you're going to get uh, 4 pi capital R square root to R squared minus y squared oh, what next well we have an equation putting this cross-sectional um, area in terms of um, y so now we're going to integrate with relation to y um, from negative r to positive r of uh, this expression, we're actually going to put 4 pi r on the outside, 4 pi r um, of square root r squared minus y squared dy. Now this can be simplified. Um, as you can see, this circle is symmetric. So the sum of the cross-sectional areas from negative r to 0 is going to be equal to the sum of cross-sectional areas from 0 to positive r. So to make things easier, we're going to multiply this by 2 
and just put it from 0 to R. Uh, so just finding the volume of that part of the donut, um, just to make things a little easier. All right. Now the hard part is this integration. And your first instinct may be to um, just use some trig substitution, which can get really icky really fast. Uh, but actually, if you uh, notice, uh, the equation for uh, the, this graphing this on the Cartesian, Cartesian plane actually gives you the equation for a circle. If you set this equal to x equals square root r squared minus y squared, and you graph that, you figure out that uh, you, you get a circle. Of radius r. That is just the graph for a circle of radius r. If I can draw a circle, which I evident, which I evidently cannot, um, but that's good enough, I guess. So um, this is going to be, I, oh, sorry, a little lag. This is going to be a circle of radius r. Um, and the question basically asks from zero to r along the y part. So from zero to r, what is the area bounded? by the x-axis and the y-axis. And that's going to be this region right here. So intuitively, from 0 to r, from uh, square root r squared minus y squared, just to graph a circle, and we want to find the area under the curve, which is what this integral is stating, we can just solve directly by um, by inspection that the, the volume is going to be equal to 1 fourth pi r squared. So this entire uh, this entire integral, we can take a shortcut, it's just equal to 1 fourth pi r squared. If we use trick substitution, it would have gotten really messy really fast, so this is a great shortcut. So this becomes 2 times 4 pi r times 1 fourth pi r squared, which is equal to 2 r, capital R, pi squared, r squared. So if you ever want to find the volume of uh, your, your, your Krispy Kreme donut, um, you, can, you can just use this equation, capital R, a little r, and that will give you the volume of a torus. I hope you liked that video. I'll see you next week be in both groups. Um, so actually the number of um, combinations in group A corresponds to the number of partitions in n minus 1 is